Welcome back to another episode of the Process and Automation Podcast with the Automation Guys. Yeah, as always, with me here is Arno. Hello, Sasha. Hi, Arno. So, and yeah, together we will discuss low-code business process management, not more process management, process automation today. And um, yeah, and we'll look at it and, and see why it is um, very important for businesses to to look closer closer to and what what the benefits are and um, yeah so what low code business process automation is all about because um, you probably heard intelligent automation hyper automation but now what is business process automation uh, it's nothing really new but um, I think we start talking differently about all these automation uh, technologies tools areas. Um, uh, from time to time. So you will see that low code business process automation more and more going forward. So yeah, and that's the topic of um, our today's podcast. So yeah, um, yeah, in the age of sort of rapid innovation, um, we know uh, all companies um, out there currently are adopting low code business process automation more and more um, to, to meet the demand. Um, to get their custom applications developed quicker and to um, to obviously uh, react to the changing requirements in the market and uh, get go to market uh, quicker so yeah all these uh, um, things um, make low code business process automation uh, very attractive and um, yeah and that's that's also resulting in that the market around low-code automation platforms uh, is is growing and is growing a lot. So, so in the next um, next year, we will see even even steeper growth. But in the last twelve months, it has grown twenty five percent alone. So, which is which is huge. So, um, yeah, with with that business process automation, um, yeah, we will see see lots of lots of things happening. So in the past. Um, as we know, software was um, yeah mainly inflexible um, for for large uh, organizations. So um, uh, we have we have noticed that one, um, and you always notice that one when there are crises um, uh, out there. So COVID nineteen pandemic really exposed that that situation where where these old software systems couldn't be changed quickly so um that that was a really big disadvantage so the these business process automation platforms they mean flexibility and um, agility so and that's why we 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 like keep talking about it so all the low code no code um agile software development all, all these topics are very really good to talk about and very yeah. important topics to talk about so um yeah, let's look at some some examples, Arno. What kind of areas could we could we um, talk about um, when it comes to business process automation? Well, yeah, I, I think the examples is obviously the, the 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 ones that sort of provides color to the picture. But I think um, you know when, when we look at these examples, I think it's probably useful to sort of define what business process automation involves and you know really this this hasn't changed much and i think this really um uh, yeah, I, I think it's what we need to do is sort of just re redefine what it is and you know what the, what we want to do is, is, is sort of automate processes with inside businesses um and and, and to minimize the the need for human intervention. Um, you know, obviously we're gonna always have human input and judgment. And, you know, we can look at how software bots can actually take some of that away. Um, you know, I'm looking at things like automate, you know, automation of repetitive tasks. Um, so, 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 so these are sort of, you know, from a business process automation perspective, um, you know, if you look at the whole package, this, you know, it, it, it's it, it, it's 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 what we want to achieve with inside, you know, that 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 sort of the, the outcomes of that, um, you know, and then examples like you alluded to, you know, it, which is good is, is things like invoice processing, 
uh, mm-hmm. for example, um, um, you know, when a, a, a invoice arrives, um, a business process automation uh, the system can can actually automatically scan that. Um, it could validate that, make sure the invoice is valid. It's got a valid purchase order, and then you know, route that for approval. Um, and again, this sort of eliminates the the, the 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 need for sort of manual intervention, manual data entry, and it sort of speeds up the whole sort of payment process, um, you know, for your invoice uh, processing process. Um, another one, and again, you know, we've touched on this one in in several podcasts in the past, is employee onboarding. And again, if you apply business process automation. You can streamline your onboarding process by automating the creation um, of um, user accounts, provisioning access to the various systems, um, you know, sending out of welcome emails to mm-hmm. new buyers. So, so all of the elements that you think in 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 that sort of employee onboarding process, you can automate that using BPA or business process yeah. automation. And such it seems an like yeah, such an important topic these days with all the um crisis finding finding employees isn't it onboarding has to be spot on yeah yeah exactly and and, and I, I think that's important because that's such a a process that leans itself to sort of a rinse and repeat type uh-huh. let's automate it let's sort of um get that digitized um and you know low code business process automation is perfect for that sort of scenario because it, it is sort of something that's predictable um you know, it's 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 not something that um, changes every day. Um, it's perfectly orchestrated by by using a low code workflow platform, for example. Um, you know, so again, a very very good sort of um, candidate for for automation. Um, you know, if if you're new to BPA, I, you know, I, th- I think it's becoming quite mainstream. And um, if you're still looking for scenarios or use cases. You know, with inside HR, I think onboarding is definitely a, a, a good candidate. And then you, you know, customer facing, you're looking at something like um, customer uh, support ticket routing. And again, these are things like instead of um, manually assigning support tickets to different agents, um, business process automation can apply intelligence and and route them on on various factors like you know what's the issue, what's the customer priority agent availability, you know, and these sort of factors. Um, Inventory management as well. So for instance, a BPA can track inventory levels and in real time and and sort of uh, trigger reordering of stock um, Mm. and, you know, to to, to reach a a predefined thresholds. Um, Also things like data entry and data validation. Of course, you know, there's a lot of data um, that we capture these days, um, especially sort of um, uh, areas like finance and healthcare. And when you apply business process automation, you know you can automate these data entry tasks um, uh, using robotic process automation. And again, you know you're going to redu- reduce the, the the number of errors that um, you have with inside these activities, and that, and that ultimately ensures uh, data accuracy. Um, so, so, so these are sort of just a, a few examples of of where you can as, you know apply business process automation, um, you know, and again the benefits of these, uh, you know, of the application of this is is quite numerous. But you know, you look at sort of data accuracy, um, completion of um, processes, with, you know, with inside SLA. So, so the you know customer retention, things like this, mm. is, is natural things that that falls out of. Um, you know the, the the sort of application of automated processes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, there are so many. Yeah, basically every everything what what the company is doing, um, uh, yeah, it, it's a process, right? So when you when you look around these processes, you find plenty of of areas, high volume, um, maybe not high volume, but quite complex. But you still want to make sure it runs really, really safely end to end. So really, really, pretty much everything what happens in the business um, you can um, look at or you should look at anyway and and find things um, which can be automated. Um, and yeah, there's there's one one quote, isn't it? I don't I actually don't know who said that, but um, was like um, um, yeah, 
you you should automate what can be automated, isn't it? So, um, and that uh, I think that's uh, that's that's important. And yeah, with business process automation, yeah, plenty plenty of uh, um, things to do. And uh, yeah, with low code and no code, um, yeah, you can you can get there much much faster, sort of twenty times faster than sort of doing doing it um, sort of the old old way, opening up your coding coding environment and and get get going but even that these days is much quicker than than it was when when we started arno yeah yeah exactly and things like low code platforms is is used these days to implement business process automation and again, again it unlocks sort of the sort of immense potential um especially sort of integrating with 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 complicated new technologies like ai um, you know, mm-hmm. integrating that all into digital workflows. Um, you know, and, and, and most of the leading local platforms um, obviously have, have fully embraced the sort of AI capabilities that's on the market now, that sort of open AI capabilities. And, and all of that really results in boosting productivity for, um, you know, all the professional developers that's out there that, that develops these um, automation mm. solutions and even sort of people like citizen developers that can take advantage of commoditized AI solutions and, and bring that into their processes. And, you know, and, and that all expedite the, the, the creation of, 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 you know, all of these automated workflow solutions we see, see that's shareable and it's reusable. Mm-hmm. And again, you know, across all these various industries, you know, regardless if it's sort of financial industry, um, you know, banking, um, manufacturing, retail, you know, um, you know, teams are sort of engaged in this and in, in this sort of this, this, the, the, the process of all of the change management to align themselves more with, uh, you know, business process automation, digital process automation to to ensure that, you know, their digital transformation projects are, are really successful and 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 it sort of it, it works with the, with the progressive uh, technologies out there. Um, you know, it, th- there's so many things out there that could be could be trialed. There's so many things out mm-hmm. there that could be be used um, in a, a sort of environment where you say, well, you know, we we we're going to actually experiment with 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 this sort of AI technology. We're going to plug that into our um, uh, business process automation initiative um you know maybe we're not ready for that or maybe this actually brings something that we feel is beneficial to our our, our company um you know again if you look at a, a, a process that you automate you know there, there, there's there, there can be so many dependencies um that, that 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 you can say well you know we 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 when we automate this process and and, and in, in, in the past or a process like this, you know, we have to create the excessive documentation. Um, it's prone to errors. Um, you know, we've got technical debt because we've got so many other systems with that, that we need to deal with. And I think with, with, with the low code automation tools, those things have come to the surface very quickly and you can understand, well, we, which, which things should we really choose? Um, and, you know, what path to take? Um, and again, all of this sort of adds to to the ability to to really accelerate your digital transformation journey. You know, you've got these choices. You know, it doesn't have to be a sort of a a six month or a year down the line, and you feel, oh, this is not going to work. This is sort of let's try it out, let's trial it, let's see if this is going to unlock the potential of automation. If it doesn't, let's move on. Let's you know try and find some, something else. You know to to um to look at where we feel automation can can be beneficial yeah it's definitely not just a one off thing isn't it you do yeah. so we have that uh, again and again um, as uh, as, a, as a topic here and then for us from the community as well um but yeah it, it is a, is an ongoing process um it's a cycle so yeah, trying out things looking at it adjusting doing something else and um, yeah, not just do a one-off, one-off thing, and just expect everything uh, to be great. But um, yeah, so when when it comes to low-code business process solutions and platforms, there's the 
there are a few topics we should uh, should ask, um, or you should take as a checklist, nearly when um, uh, when you look out for a platform like this. Um, so, does it have RPA integration? So, has that platform you're choosing uh, RPA capabilities uh, built in, or or will it will it be another platform you have, or will have will you have um, to do clunky and manual coding um, to integrate these tools, so your platform and another tool. Um, so yeah, um, it, another question you should ask yourself is um, um, how about the availability of the platform? So can you can you offer functions you need from yeah. from from a single unified platform or um, Rather than uh, asking teams to deal with uh, with, uh, with multiple other other platforms and solutions, so all these silos, different applications, you mentioned them, Arno, and um, yeah, and is it is it easy easy to use and is it re reusable? So um, when we talk about easy to use and low code, um, we talk a lot uh, a lot about drag and drop interfaces, visual designers. So th that's a platform. Come come with those. Um, is it uh, usable for any team member? Um, you mentioned citizen developers earlier, so it can be um, a technical sort of person or not not too technical person in, in the department maybe pick that up and build um, uh, their their solutions or start building their solutions. Um, yeah, and is there an option to reuse stuff um, done by others and on the platform, other components, user interfaces, integrations? Is it just easy to use? So if, one department is building a great document um, uh, to, component to to do something. Can can it be reused in another part of of the company in another process in the same way? Um, yeah, uh, all these things obviously are very important um, uh, when your business uh, progresses um, with uh, with business process automation. And um, yeah, does it have backwards compatibility? Um, yeah. Um, will that low code development platform keep us uh, keep up as new regulations and and new standards emerge and will it also deal with with everything else in, yeah. in your system you you have running and so um, you don't necessarily want to touch um, so so you need you need both of it isn't it? you want a stable running core complex process but at the same time you want to keep going um, uh, with, with the latest stuff you have out there, with the latest AI technologies, latest data um, uh, technologies, data fabric, all those kind of things. But yeah, you want the best of both worlds. So yeah, those kind, kind of uh, questions you should, should definitely ask when you look out for a low-code business process automation platform and solution. Yeah, and I think it's it's it, you know I think if it's it, it the question is you might be looking at streamlining streamlining a, 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 a sort of streamlining a, a complex process or optimizing workflows in your in your business or you know your aim might be to enhance um, uh, your customer or employee experiences. There is this synergy between low code solutions and business process automation. And, you know, I, I truly think that propels, you know, your digital transformation ambitions to new heights because those, those two work really well in concert. And, you know, that provides really good end to end process visibility. Um, you know, that it, automates obviously tasks with very high precision um it allows you to monitor process performance in real time and you know in essence it's it's sort of ensured this scalability and adaptability um in 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 your business landscape especially in a sort of dynamic business landscape and i think you know that the sort of the end game is where the payoff comes is is where you have really great operational agility that helps you you know stay relevant because you know there, there's so many competitors out there so many people that kind of goes digital and you know this is something that that, that you need to embrace and um it also future proofs your organization against you know emerging future risks and any un unforeseen changes 
Mm. So, you know, the world we live in is it sort of changes rapidly. There's there's always rapid advance, advancement of technology. Um, you know, digital innovation is out there. Uh, there's so many choices. Um and and all of this it can be a sort of a existential challenge. So you know it, it's imperative that if if you look at sort of the future next year beyond that, you you want to sort of harness the the the, the power of, of 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 low code business process automation. And again, what we mean by that is that you can automate business processes without running to IT departments to actually um implement those 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 uh, automations you could really leverage low code or rapid application development technologies to um to automate these processes and you know that's that's what it's all about you know it's all about um you know rapid application development sort of being able to to, to push out these automations very quickly um to where it matters and to be able to change it very quickly um, if it needs to, you know, change your business conditions and, and, and things like that. Um, mm. And that's that's what this is all about. You know, it's all, it's about that sort of agility to to do these sort of things, um, you know, without having to wait a very long time to discover, well, oh, IT can't do this because they've got a six-month backlog of development. You know, we have to wait, yeah. you know. And, and it's crazy out there. So still, so plenty of companies out there with uh, uh, with, with spreadsheets. Um, uh, so with invoice processes not being fully automated, or not even twenty five percent automated, just dealing with spreadsheets and emails on a daily basis. So, well, of course, in these bigger companies, um, th this is what they hear, isn't it? Uh, day in, day out. Um, yeah, you have to keep going with your with your really bad yeah, you could say shitty <laughs> shitty way of working because that's what it is um, because the IT department has no resources and there are other priorities and um, yeah so there's no budget and um, those kind of things um, but it needs that strategic approach going into 2024 yeah. so okay yeah. And, and the honest, honest view on, on, on the on the value of a platform like this what it does it does it bring and and we can see once it's established um, and uh, projects starting first small and then growing, everyone gets it. And then, and there is the proof um, um, in 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 these departments that that it really had an impact. Yeah. Um, Seventy percent increase of processing times, or um, you, oh, savings in 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 the six figures, seven figures, uh, in for some companies and reducing processing um from from weeks to days and that kind of stuff so it's it's really real big big change when when these things are implemented it doesn't need to be like the craziest process within the company yeah. but um when it produces value and, and enough value everyone should have a platform like this um and get everyone on it um it's just incredible what the results are yeah yeah yeah. yeah, I think you know what we see um, is there is this. Um, we sometimes challenge, you know, with with low code automation. You know what what is possible using those technologies versus sort of conventional high code technologies, and you know the platforms out there are quite sophisticated in that. You know, it's it it solve and we can solve so many normal business um, needs. Mm. So, you know, we, we're looking at case management systems that's got specifics around verticals with inside insurance. And, you know, I look at sort of 10 years ago, local platforms would, would not be able to do that because there's such bespoke um elements in in those types of requirements that needs to be implemented but these days the platforms are so sophisticated that you know regardless if you look at those requirements and you pass that to a you know developer that does local solutions versus a developer does conventional kind of solutions 
both of those can solve the problems but again with low code that kind of it's like 70 percent quicker because Absolutely. yeah you know and and it's almost like a no-brainer in terms of getting that solution out getting that solution into the business getting that live versus waiting you know potentially 70 percent longer for that um so the the level of sophistication in these platforms are so so high um you know it, we kind of get to a point where it's sort of it's on parity with what you can achieve with with high code so we're mm-hmm. almost at a point where it sort of it makes that obsolete now i'm not saying that high code developments is going to disappear i think that there's a place for that but if you look purely speaking from a a business solution you know i need this process i wanted to do this it needs to follow these steps that's what i need to do in order to satisfy my customers these logo platforms are perfect for that and there's no Mm -hmm. need to actually code that with conventional coding and um you know spend 70 percent more on that you know rather use that 70 percent that you've got in that to actually refine that process and actually change it or in, in, you know introduce the almost the agility in that process um to to evolve it into what it actually should be um mm-hmm. so it's, it's it's these incredible things that i see day in and day out and i'm thinking with this sort of low code business process automation type solutions um you know, the version one, week one might look like this. Two weeks later, it's totally pivoted away because somebody has sort of um, got a new idea or mm. they've, they've realized there's a new uh, compliance issue that they need to deal with. And all of that can be sort of um, implemented so fast and so quickly. And, you know, and I think that's why it's really exciting. And then, you know, you couple this with all of the progressive things like the AI Mm-hmm. It's coming through um you know it's 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 really really exciting times to 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 sort of um use these technologies and 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 and, and really sort of bring them into businesses yeah definitely yeah so um yeah low code business process automation yeah has lots of uh power to to fix uh, plenty of problems within businesses um obviously not all problems are technical of technical nature but um uh, or can be solved technically but um if they can i guess uh, bpa will be will be a strong strong uh, tool to to get in uh, next year or if you're already working on this that's great um do more with it um it definitely will be exciting to see all the results so um yeah, so we we are here on the podcast um, um, with another episode very, very soon. I hope this episode was um, insightful. Um, if you like the episode, uh, please give us a five-star review on, on the platform wherever you listen to this podcast. And um, yeah, we, we will be back very soon. And until then, let's automate it.